I have been learning Hangumar for about seven, eight years now. And throughout the years, there's just been a lot of grammar points that just never were explained to me, but I had to like infer by seeing how people use the language. Like that's not a bad thing that they don't say them. That means that uh, my sources were coming from a Korean perspective, not from like an anglicized, like native English speaker perspective. But I wish somebody had told me these grammar rules when I was starting out. It would have saved me a lot of trouble, it would have saved me a lot of time, and it would have saved me some embarrassment when I was talking to native speakers. The reason this arises is because English and Korean are so radically different languages, they have such different structures. So when I tried to do them in Korean, I was like, what the fuck is going on in here on this day? So originally I actually wrote these quick facts for a friend in my Japanese class who wanted to learn Korean. So he already knew Japanese and I just wanted to give him a few like warnings for when he was going to breeze through Korean. So today you are going to be getting spoon-fed some beautiful information that I learned the hard way by making mistakes, embarrassing myself, sounding like an idiot, but you guys get it on a silver platter. This is mostly for like A2, B1 speakers, so if you're an absolute beginner, I'm not about to teach you the basics of Korean, but here are some facts that intermediate or maybe late beginners are missing that would actually help them a lot if somebody just outright said it. First one is that adjectival or relative clause forms of verbs must, must, must modify a noun. There is no such thing as a substantive adjective in the Korean language. So you absolutely have to say 하는 거. You absolutely have to have 거 or some noun in that position. You have to say 예쁜 거. You have to say 먹을 거. You have no alternative. In English, you can say something like forget the bad, remember the good, and there is no noun because that adjective is acting like a noun. And as far as I know, every European language I know can do this. You don't need a noun. Even if you have a structure that isn't a noun, uh, originally it was derived from a noun. So for example, if you want to say like but, you will end your verb with nunde, for example, hanunde. But de is actually a noun, and this but is kind of derived from that noun, nunde. When I kind of realized this, I was like absolutely like surprised. Important fact number two. If you cannot find a verb stem, it's probably a noun plus ida, the copula. I remember a lyric from a song I listened to years ago. The lyric was nuna nuna jiman. So nuna is nuna, but like, you are my nuna, but... And I couldn't understand what is nuna jiman, what is nuna da, what is nunwa. Well, and I think I was actually searching for the word nunwa. And of course I didn't find it because that doesn't exist, that's... That, no. It was actually the noun nuna plus ijiman. But they came together just as jiman. So if you cannot find the verb, it's probably a noun and you're looking it up wrong. And when I learned this, I was like absolutely shocked. Number three. The line between action verbs and adjectives is really thin, especially when you're talking about changes happening in the past. So for example, when we're talking about someone who's angry, they, you know, we have the expression hua nada. So hua actually means anger and nada is like come out. If you can say somebody nayo. that means they are getting angry right now. The anger is happening right now. That is a literal action verb, nada, like the anger is coming out. But when you put that in the past tense, we're talking about someone who is currently in the state of anger. Someone is angry. So that past tense action is actually really much like a adjective. And it's even more like that when you look at this chart where adjectives never get nun, they always get un or nian. And coincidentally, action verbs in the past get un or nian. Huh. So, hwanan saram or chalsengin saram 
looks just like an adjective, huh? How funny. But they themselves still are action verbs. So if I were to quote it in the present tense, it would be 화난다고 or 잘생긴다고 because it still is an action verb. Adjectives cannot be quoted like that. Adjectives have to be 예쁘다고, 밝았다고. And when I realized this relationship was so close, I was absolutely shook. Number four, 는 and 가 are actually two sides of the same exact coin. If you switch them, you're probably changing the nuance a little bit. So for example, we're talking about 화나다 again, so if you wanted to elongate a little bit, you could say 화가 나다, 화가 나요, someone's getting angry, their anger is coming out, but maybe theoretically you could say 화는 났어. You're saying, oh, not something else came out, no, my anger came out, I am angry, no, I am angry. Uh, normally, maybe you will say, you know, 나는 이걸 했어요. I did this thing. But if you were to change it to 내가 이걸 했어요, you kind of change the nuance. You said, no, 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 not another person. I did this. A little shiny, aren't I? So when I learned this fact, I was absolutely shooketh. So number five. Interrogative pronouns are actually the same as indefinite pronouns. And actually sometimes they are preferred over the indefinite pronouns that you learned. So you probably learned uh, 뭔가, 어딘가, 누군가. But in reality, I think Koreans really often say 뭐, 어디, 누구. And they're not questions at all. They're saying somebody, somewhere, uh, something. But they're using the question words. What, where, who. So don't be surprised if someone says to you, 뭐 샀어요? And that, that's not a question, they're, they're, they're declaring, I bought something. When I, you know, realized this, that this is possible, I was absolutely florbed. Next realization is that passive verbs act as action verbs and not as adjectives. This is especially a misconception of like all European speakers, any Western language, it works like this. When we talk in the passive voice, those are actually adjectives. So for example, maybe the army was destroyed. Destroyed is actually an adjective here. And if it was a language that wasn't English, you would have to agree, noun, and adjective, and the army was destroyed. So when I went into Korean, I thought, oh, okay, passive verbs, those are adjectives, right? It turns out, no, they're not adjectives, they're just action verbs. So they take all those action verb conjugations, uh, 막히는, 막힌다고, uh, 막히는구나, but I was using it incorrectly because I had the concept that was an adjective, which was incorrect uh, Western style thinking that I needed to break when I learned Korean. So for example, you would say 막히는 차, the car that was blocked, and that's how you should be saying it if it's present tense. If I were to say 막힌 차, which is what I used to say, I'm actually talking about the past tense, the car that was blocked. Compare that to if it was just an adjective, I would just say like, I don't know, 빨간 차, that's just straight red car. And so basically when I learned this fact, I was absolutely uh, lorba looped. Absolutely lorba looped. Something else I realized from using the language a lot was in colloquial speech, they seem to drop the particles a lot. So we're learning so hard what's 는, 가, 를, and in colloquial speech, you can drop it whenever you want. You cannot, however, drop 한테. That, that does not ever drop. But 는, 가, 를 can drop if you don't want to say it. So in the safe situation where you don't know what the particle is, just, just don't put a particle. If you can't remember which particle goes with 좋다, just, just say 이거 좋아요. 이거. It's, it's, that's fine. You don't need 이건, you don't need 이게, 이걸. Just 이거. 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 When I noticed native speakers do this, I was absolutely shablamalamadad. This one's hard to kind of explain in one sentence. So in English, prepositions, prepositional phrases can describe nouns, right? I eat the food at home. Here, at home is modifying eat, right? We're talking about the method of eating, the location of eating at home. But another prepositional phrase could modify a noun. I eat the food with the least calories. With the least calories is describing food here. So in English, it depends on context, whether we're modifying a verb or we're modifying a noun. 
In Korean, however, the prepositional phrases or postpositional phrases, I guess is what you would call them, always, 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 always modify the verb. Unless in the presence of ui, that suddenly changes everything. I, uh, so, for example, um, you could say, Harry Potter. The Harry Potter that appeared in the Goblet of Fire. In English, you could just say Harry Potter from the Goblet of Fire if we're talking about a specific Harry, right? But in Korean, you absolutely need to say, Otherwise, eso would be modifying the verb in this sentence. So, it's not common that you're going to use this, this cluster esa ui, but be aware that if you're using a prepositional phrase or a postpositional phrase like esa, we esa, you are actually modifying the verb here, not the noun that it is next to. And when I realized this fact, I was absolutely googly, soogly, tootly, fruitly. And that leads me to my next one, which is other than ui, you cannot stack prepositions in Korean. So in English, we can say something like, oh, it's like in the movies. We can say like, in, and both are okay. We can stack them very easily. In Korean, that wouldn't work. I tried saying something like, uh, that does not work. You cannot combine e and charam. That, that, that didn't make any sense, and my the person I was talking to was completely confused. You would have to use a completely different verb, which would be like yonghwa kateo. Like that's what you would say. So in my English mind, oh, I can stack prepositions like uh, onto, or as before, or or something like that. In Korean, that absolutely does not work. And basically, when I realized this one, I was gogo lokopolo sholo momoro. And that leads me into my next one. Prepositions cannot be stapled onto ida. The copula. So, you know, in English, you can say, I am at home. In Korean, you cannot do that with, you know, chibe ieyo. That does not work. You cannot attach some particle or preposition to ida. Ida is only, only, only for nouns. You can't even say something like, chingu uh, hante yeyo. It's for a friend. That does not work. You need to like elongate it some other way. Like, I don't know, chingu hante sajun goeo, for example. In English, it's totally okay to use any preposition with B, but that does not work in Korean. Ida can only, 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 only take nouns. So when I saw in Turkish, they were using like from with the copula, I was like, is, it, is this allowed? And basically when I realized that was not allowed in Korean, I was absolutely hongalo gongala bongal gongaros. So that is what I learned from hard labor in Korea. Working hard, making mistakes taught me this. So hopefully for some learners of Korean out there, I just saved you a little bit of trouble by making it directly obvious to you because you're probably coming from a western language and you think oh i can do this and this and this no honey no you cannot do that this is korean the structure is different you are not allowed to think the the english way that is kumji so let me know in the comments below was this helpful to you what other realizations have you learned from learning korean i would love to hear maybe there's something i forgot that was very key and important so uh, i'd like to see the discussion going on below you know follow me on my instagram i am posting on there every single day so there's something interesting to see whatever day you look at my insta i'm sure it's absolutely popping so thank you so much for watching. It was really fun to discuss this topic. I literally have had this on a piece of paper under my desk for like five years now. So finally the world gets to see the stupidity that uh, I used to think. And now I am uh, an enlightened Korean learner. That's all for now. I'll see you all again soon for another video. Bye bye.